Animation is a blank canvas that gives us the ability to elevate our storytelling and let our imaginations go wild. Create ideas that would probably be impossible to film in real life. And that gives us the ability to tell these stories in a unique and original way. I don't think anyone believes that animation is actually real when they're watching it. Still, they get lost in the story and they feel for those characters, even though they know that. I think that's, that's the magic of animation. We did Pips for Southeastern Guide Dogs, and then we did Believe in Hope. And then they wanted to keep exploring the stories in animation format. What's wrong, my dear? Are you lost? Bruno produced a short animated film called Kafka's Doll. And he shared it with Stacy and me. For a while now, I've had this urge to see the world. As I was watching it, I started to envision this other film told in the same way, using three different types of animation. That's when I wrote the script. It was inspired by a true story about one little girl who lost her dad while serving in the military, and she was literally devastated and depressed. And that is the story that we're telling through Lucy, and especially how a dog can come into somebody's life and completely transform it. So I emailed the script to you guys. Did you have a chance to read it yet? I was really excited about the story and also about the innovative use of different animation styles. I love it because this is an underdog story. Stacy, what did you think? Yeah, I also loved it, so I'm excited to share this story. So are you guys ready for the journey? <laughs> We have two main characters. One of them is Chloe. She's a little girl who's going through a moment of grief. She's lost someone and she's trying to, to cope with it. And then we have Lucy, which is a Labrador who was training to be a guide dog, but things didn't go as well as she hoped. They meet and they help each other. There was many, many iterations of names for both the little girl and for the dog, starting with Angel and Anna. Then probably 47 different iterations of names since then, before we finally settled on Chloe and Lucy. Chloe means blooming, and Lucy means bringer of light. And with this film, you know, Lucy's definitely going to bring light uh, into this little girl's world and, you know, helps Chloe bloom into this kind of friendship that they develop. It took us a while to finalize Lucy's looks. Um, she had to have the perfect ears, the perfect legs, the perfect paws. We spent so much time on those ears. There's always quite a bit of back and forth with the uh, dogs, especially with the ears, making sure they look right because it changed it slightly and it doesn't look like a Labrador anymore. We had three animation styles, so it wasn't just the 3D version of Lucy, it was the 2D version, the chalk drawing version of Lucy, so there was a lot of aspects to get the dog just right. I think Chloe might be one of the easiest characters that yeah. for us to give approval to. She was to. perfect she from was day perfect. one. I remember the first time looking at a close-up animation of her face and seeing she had this beautiful asymmetric freckle pattern and it just looked so lifelike, it was so beautiful, it was so unique and uh, I really feel like Chloe has become a one-of-a-kind character. We have the instructor which is, has been a recurrent character in our other films who represents what Southeast Guide Dogs do and She's like a key piece in making these two main characters meet 
and complement each other and help each other. It's kind of fun to see each time uh, how she looks a little different over the years. <laughs> Designing the instructor, I think this time it's easier. I changed the shapes of her. I love the representation of her. She's got hips, she's got thighs, she looks like a powerful woman. I think that she provides such a powerful anchor to what Southeastern Guide Dogs is. Because there's three different, let's call it, um, states of mind for the characters in the films. We thought it could be nice to separate those and have different styles and techniques for each. The three-dimensional animation represents the present. And then there's a couple moments that could be seen as maybe flashbacks. It's like decisive moments where something bad happens to each of the two main characters. The charcoal drawings uh, represent dream sequences, things that happen in one's imagination. The chalk process gives it like a, a texture and uh, you know, a real a feeling of something real that, that is really nice. So to make the animation in, in chalk, first of all I made it um, with uh, the computer, with uh, the software. Once Gail is done, uh, the whole animation is printed frame by frame. And I have to trace all the frames in a paper specifically done for charcoal and gave it the look with charcoals and white chalk. For the first sequence done in Kirkle. It was they were needed around 70 um, drawings, more or less. It took me around two days to do all of that. And then we have to shoot it back to the computer, like one by one, uh, using photography. And then we get the sequence. Uh, in digital again in order to edit and to blend it into the film. Bringing talk into this animation, I think it's important because, again, it let us express something in a more abstract way. It's another language to use. We are traditional artists too, so it's nice to bring it back. When working with a composer, I don't like tell him how to do his work, just like what the feeling needs to be. In. I start with the ideas on the piano. We do everything with virtual instruments. And then later, if we have the budget, we record uh, real instruments. I like to use real instruments because uh, the player brings something more to the, to the music. We don't have dialogue, so the music is part of the dialogue. Lucy have a motive and the motive is not perfect. It's about trying to do something and not quite getting there. I need to feel the, the emotions that I'm trying to convey. So I think it's a very emotional process. We need to feel 
uh, what uh, the characters are feeling, we need to feel what the music is trying to inspire. We know that the music is a universal language, so uh, it connects to people easily and needs to be part of the storytelling. That's key to the, yeah, to the success. We need to feel the emotion. Uh, we think that the job is done. Are there any Easter eggs in this film? Are there? What's been really fun doing multiple shorts is we get to create some common threads in the film. And so with Lucy, we open up on the beautiful Southeastern Guide Dog campus, the same campus we got to see in Pip. The courtyard's had a little bit of a makeover. You'll even see that iconic statue of Ace from Pip in Lucy. And additionally, of course, we've got our instructor is making a return. And if you look closely on our instructor's desk, you'll even see a picture of Hope. Some things have become a trademark, like showing a bit of the backstory through photos and framed photos. We started working on Lucy while we were still finishing Hope. Then we aired Hope and it had a tremendous success for us. Thanks to Hope, we saw a 200% increase in year-end donations. We talked it through and decided that Lucy would be the perfect character for another Christmas animation, especially since we didn't have to reinvent the characters. So we are telling another story involving Lucy, Chloe, and the mom, uh, but in a Christmas setting. Gary and Melody Johnson made these films possible through their generous support because they recognize that storytelling is an important part of what we do. These stories help us communicate our mission to people who could either help us or who can be helped by us. Not every dog is, is going to become a guide dog, but every dog can make a big difference, which is why we have these alternative careers, such as service dogs to help veterans in need, or skilled companions to help children like Chloe. We want people to know that our dogs transform lives.